Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. So in this video, I'm going to cover the system design for Unique ID Generator. So this is a small little component. Uh, usually it won't be treated as a separate system design question to be covered within 45 minutes. However, uh, it is important. So during the detailed design part, the interviewer can deep dive into this component to ask you how to design this one. So, um, so let's get started. Um, so one example for the use case of unique uh, ID generator is for a pretty a pretty traditional question called URL shortener. So I have a separate video for this uh, URL shortener design. Uh, if you want to take a look how uh, the unique ID generator is going to be used uh, within the whole system design for URL shortener, then feel free to take a look. I will include a uh, video link uh, below. So this would be like a one use case. Some other use case, like uh, for example, uh, unique ID generator is going to generate a unique ID for the for each of the event. Uh, so each of the event can be tracked or uh, used for debugging. So that's uh, some use cases for this component. Um, so let's see how to design this one. So there are several ways to do the system design. So the first one is what you could do is you could use Google Spanner. So Google Spanner is a cloud service which which you could use. Uh, so one thing you could use uh, is the primary key. So it's similar. It's very similar to the RDBMS primary key, auto increment primary key. Uh, but this due to the scale of Google Spanner, it provides a uh, high uh, scalability of the system so uh, you're going to uh, you, you can send um, much more of the QPS to Google, uh, to Google Spanner to generate the unique ID based on the primary key so the first way is uh, Google Spanner <clears throat> auto increment primary key so another way uh, you could use is of course you could have some load balancer and then you have a bunch of the server and each server is going to use UUID to generate the unique ID. However, uh, there is still some chance, although it is very, very little chance to get collision. Um, so if you use this way, uh, maybe after years, uh, you can get some collision. Um, but uh, but I mean, there is still a chance for you, for you to get a collision, although the chance is very small. So a worry, um, Another way, which is uh, pretty, uh, a, a pretty uh, well applied in some com big companies like Google or Twitter, so they use um, some custom defined unique ID. So one way to define this unique ID is uh, what you could do is uh, you could um, uh, include uh, like like uh, separate fields within. 40, 40, uh, 64 or 108 uh, bits, dif depending on how you design this uh, unique ID. But I will, let's say we are going with uh, 128 bits. So how are you going to fit this 128 bits with unique ID? So the first one I would, I'm going to use is, uh, I'm going to use the timestamp. So the timestamp is a 64 bits integer and it is going to be the uh, the the time the milliseconds of etc time so etc milliseconds so this is the first uh, 64 bits and the other uh, the other uh, i would say another let's say another 32 bits i'll use is uh, the server id so the server ID, so you know that for big companies, they have the data center and each data center contains a rack. Each rack can, can, contains uh, a bunch of the servers. So let's say we, for each of the server, we have a unique server ID. But uh, for example, we can separate this uh, 30, 32 bits into uh, maybe let's say for first 16 bits, we are going to have the uh, so let's say the data center ID. So depending on how many of the data centers we have, uh, 16, 16 can be a bit overkill. But let's say we start with 16 bits for the data center ID. And then 
for each of the data center, we have the corresponding server. And then we have the server ID uh, represented by 16 bits. So assuming each of the data center can have this much of the uh, servers. So now we have used 64 plus uh, 16 plus 16, we have another 32 bits to use. So what else are we going to use? So let's say we have, we could have each of the server can run multiple process uh, to uh, to run this unique ID generator. Let's say we have, uh, for example, let's say we have eight bits to be used as process ID, uh, and then the rest of the 24 bits are used for deduping. Uh, deduping. So uh, overall, this way. Uh, so if we use like a one. 28 bits uh, to generate the unique ID. Then uh, first 44 and 64 bits, we use uh, UTC milliseconds, and then 16 bits, data center ID, 16 bits for server ID, and then eight bits for the process ID, 24 bits for the deduping within the same process. So that's pretty much it uh, for the third way. So depending on uh, which way we use, there there could be some pros and cons. Uh, so you could uh, talk with the interviewer if you have more time, or the interviewer want to deep dive about this component. And, but that's pretty much it um, for this uh, component design. So let me know if you have any question. So in case you have any question, feel free to leave some comments below. If you like this video, please help subscribe to this channel. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.